there's like a oh wow look at that cpu temperature holy crap good day folks i hopefully have a relatively quick video to make in this time frame of uh me not having enough time to make videos here we have the HP Pavilion 522C out and on my bed, and we're going to do something that's probably not necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway because that's just the kind of thing that I do. I'm actually in the process of scrapping some old computers, and in the process I found one that I knew had a bad motherboard, but it had a good CPU, one that would actually work in the system and be a little bit more powerful. And since this system uses an Athlon XP processor on socket A, or for those who want to be more specific, socket 462, and it's also got an AGP video card in it, I figured a better CPU wouldn't exactly hurt, especially because I don't have to actually buy one off of eBay. Now, the current processor in this computer, if I'm not mistaken, is an Athlon XP 2000 Plus, which runs at about 1.66 gigahertz. And for the time period, it was a pretty good CPU for the money, since the system was actually a, fa a fairly decently optioned machine back in 2002. At least I would think it's about 2002. Obviously, the video card was a later upgrade, since these did not come new with the Radeon 8500 that this one has. They would have used whatever integrated graphics is on the motherboard, as you can see right there. But this one has an additional video card right here. But the CPU, I believe, was an Athlon XP 2000 Plus, and it also shipped new with 256 megs of RAM. And I believe um, the original hard drive in my case was a 60 gig hard drive. So overall, not the worst uh, spec machine from the day, but I mean, obviously, it was certainly faster than a Pentium 3 and a Celeron for that matter. So I guess you got what you paid for, except for SSE2 support because Athlon XPs. And of course, this has a CD burner on the top and a DVD drive right there, floppy drive, and on the front, it's got two extra USB ports since the motherboard only has two onboard ports. So this has four USB ports, which for 2002 was about right. Uh, some of the Intel boards had all four USB ports on the back, but this one has two on the back and two on the front. So could be inconvenient, but you know, then again, your peripherals, most of the time would use the old legacy connectors and your USB would only be for like your flash drives or potentially other things like a webcam or something of that nature. Anyways, I am blabbing. Let's get the side panel off and let's get into this machine here. So I believe this should be a fairly easy procedure to do. All we really have to take care of is this baffle here, which is held in by two plastic clips up here at the top. And then that should just move away and i'm hoping that there's not too much dust out in the uh heat sink but i guess we'll find out because this is an athlon xp so anything really goes so i also well i make this jump cut inadvertently because it's also perfectly timed i need to get my screwdrivers out so i'll be right back actually to be fair there's not a whole heck of a lot of dust in here and another good thing i don't see a lot of capacitor plague in here either all the caps actually look pretty good. So that's not too shabby. Also, the single stick of DDR is definitely in there. At least it looks like it's DDR because there's only one notch on the RAM, so nice. I may or may not see if I can probably upgrade that in the future, but tonight we're just mainly worried about the CPU. We can always come back to the RAM, but definitely um, look into that RAM. So typical old socket 462 uses the same style of mounting hardware as old socket 370 boards so hopefully i can get at least one of these clips off i think i gotta come at it from this side fortunately i've got my flathead screwdriver to do this i'm obviously not going to do it on camera because it's going to be a two-handed procedure fortunately the fan is not all that dusty too and same thing goes for the baffle though i'm going to wipe that down with some paper towel but anyways let me see if i can wrangle this heat sink off real quick well, it wouldn't be a monetizer-friendly video without a little bit of some gore, am I right? No, I'm only kidding. But uh, yeah, uh, got me good. Wouldn't be a computer upgrade video without a little bit of uh, blood drawn. So that's fun. But hey, at least on the bright side, and at least I can say this much, we can reach in here with our good hand, and our heatsink is out. So that's awesome. And there lies our Athlon XP. 2000 plus presumably i think that's what this is so we should just be able to release our old friend the socket carefully because old brittle plastic okay 
and out she goes. If I can grab it. Yeah, there we go. Just gotta be careful. And there we go. So, very sweet. Yeah, it does say 2000 on the uh, thing there. This says 2400. Whoops, I'm not even really... So you can see this one is the Athlon uh, XP 2000 Plus. This one here is the 2400 Plus. And this goes in with the triangle facing towards the ZIF socket handle. So I'm going to do that. And there we go. I do need to clean it a little bit, but I'm going to go first take care of this because mm, that's delicious. Although, you know, it's whatever. Then I'm going to clean that heat sink off. We're going to apply some fresh thermal paste and get this thing going. And just like that, we now have a repasted and newly installed Athlon XP 2400 Plus CPU. So now I've brought out my RAM because I want to try and see if I have something that I'll be able to match this stick of 256 meg DDR with. Let's see if I can get it out of the socket here. Gently, of course. So I don't friggin' cut another finger open. So it looks like it's just your standard Hynix RAM stick. Basically brandless, except for a date code potentially. So don't know what we're gonna find in our bin here but i'm probably not gonna put too much ram in this thing because it's mainly gonna be running an old xp build but i guess it can't hurt to find something so there is a 256 meg ddr333 that might work pretty well i guess i'm CompTIA certified i handle <clears throat> i handle my ram professionally definitely probably gonna have a lot of cringeworthy comments but you know what i really don't care uh, that's way too big um that's 130 megahertz once again i can probably move this kit of ram out of the way if i'm gonna be honest oh, that's 166 megahertz oh, that's real slow don't want to put that in there no thank you that's dd2 uh i'm gonna just peruse through this and probably uh turn the camera back on well, amidst what I've got in here, this is about as close as I've been able to get because most of this is PC-133 or mismatched. So it looks like this is 256 meg sticks, 166 megahertz. So this will have to do. At least it'll have 512 megabytes of RAM. And that's honestly going to be the bigger performance improvement over just having only 256 megs. And besides, I couldn't tell what the speed rating of the other stick was. So whatever, these will do. All right, and the new RAM is installed. It's kind of a bear to get it in there because that last RAM slot there is right below the hard drive. And so you basically have no clearance to get that second stick of RAM into its slot. But whatever the case might potentially be, we have the system upgraded. So let's go ahead and put back on this baffle here for the heatsink, which just obviously clips into place. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, it clips into place. And uh, there we go. All right, now it's time for the most nerve-wracking part. Will she fire up? Well, if a computer is ever gonna spew out fireworks, it is going to be now. Let's find out if this thing is gonna blow up. All right, well, she powered on. No dead shorts. Oh. It's booting! Ah! Oh my god, wrong monitor cable. Holy sweet Jesus. That is amazing! Plug in the speakers, even though there's... Oh! I actually caught at the right time, holy crap. That was actually nice timing. <laughs> oh my god, I am excited. Holy crap. This thing is actually booting up. Ah! Auto the monitor. Holy crap. Not bad. Let's go to my computer, right click, properties. What do we got? Because I wasn't able to get into the BIOS, it went by too quick. And I couldn't see the monitor anyway. Oh, uh, <laughs> nice. We have an unknown CPU type at 1.47 gigahertz. So well, that's fun. At least we have 512 megabytes of RAM though. So at least it's got that going for it. And it's actually hopefully being detected by Windows. Oh yeah, it is, cool. So uh, that's interesting. Why does it say unknown CPU type? 
wonder if it shows up that way in uh, device manager. The CPU did come out a little bit later, so I wouldn't be surprised if Windows doesn't directly support this. Or maybe that's just the thing with the motherboard. Uh, that could also be, because I'm not sure what BIOS revision this uh, motherboard has on it. Uh, I don't remember what the BIOS key is on this thing either. Is it like delete or F1 or something like that? I honestly cannot remember. This thing's BIOS goes by in like two seconds, so I can't really tell. Um, so we'll just have to spam key presses here. I'm gonna have to set you guys down impromptu wise here just a moment. And I guess we'll find out. I mean, if it's gonna be the case where it says that and the clock speed will actually be lower, which is obviously what it's doing right now, um, then obviously it's not gonna stay in here. I can't have a CPU upgrade be a downgrade, if you will. Let's see. It has a BIOS of the 3rd of July, 2002. Yeah, interesting. It's so it shows the 2000 megahertz with the 266 megahertz bus. So that's showing up. Oh, this monitor looks really flickery. I'll fix that real quick. So it is properly seeing the clock speed, but obviously it's not seeing that there is a uh, Athlon XP 2400 plus very interesting. I wonder if there's like a... Oh, wow. Look at that CPU temperature. Holy crap. It's already running at 67 degrees. Damn. Um, that's not good. Um, and I did paste the CPU down onto the heatsink too. But she's running toasty. So I'm going to definitely have to uh, look into this. Well, dang. That's a shame. Because uh, I was really hoping this was going to work out. But maybe that's... Uh, for the better that I don't touch this. <laughs> OEM systems, people. OEM systems. All right, let's cut the power before we roast the CPU to death. All right, well, this is interesting. I just rebooted the computer, and as you can see, it's now running at the proper two gigahertz. So, I mean, as long as it's working, I don't really care too much. I mean, because obviously that's the thing with the BIOS. Maybe there's an update that I can apply that would actually fix that. I'm not gonna hold my breath because as I've been looking online, nothing's shown up so i'm not expecting too much to come of it but that's fine uh but i, I think i'm gonna probably run like i don't know service pack one two or something like that to bring this thing up a little bit as far as its support goes because well why not so yeah but otherwise i mean as long as it works that should be fine i don't really have anything i can test this with i should probably like bring up my disk install of half-life and i could try that on here because i've got the gpu drivers running so maybe I'll have to see what I can pull up here. All right, so we're inside of CPU-Z here. And as you can see, it does recognize this as a thoroughbred AMD Athlon XP running at two gigahertz. Although of course it still loves to call it the unknown CPU type by, uh, by the motherboard's uh, specification anyway. So it is running at 266 megahertz front side bus. And uh, I think right now it's running at 133 just based on the, uh, you know, the way the memory is. I'm not sure, maybe it's actually running at 133 megahertz bus don't know for sure but what i do know look at that voltage holy christ that is a lot of voltage maybe that's why the cpu is running so dang hot hmm that's a thonk but uh anyways so if anybody's got some information regarding the bios on this because i'd like to know if there's a way that i could update this maybe that'll add support for the cpu because uh i don't know maybe that's my issue but at least it seems to be working. There is no memory information for some reason. Maybe it's just because it doesn't recognize the chipset. Of course, you have a 64 meg Radeon 8500. But uh, at least we have the CPU working. It's just I'm really not too sure about the longevity of it running at that voltage the way that it is right now. So I'd really like to look into that. But I think for the moment, it's functional enough. So I'm not going to play with it. I might, if anything, keep the other CPU just in case I got to swap it back out. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up and get it sent out to the tube. So if you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you didn't like it so much, well, the other button works too. And if you want to see more content potentially like this one in the near future or perhaps more entertaining content, there will be a red button down below that says subscribe. I would highly recommend that you click on that as well as the bell so you don't miss whenever I upload new videos because, of course, and until the next video, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you all later in another video. Mm -hmm.